from the scriptures and seeing the city, he wept over it. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen. What was the reason which our Lord wept over Jerusalem? King David was one of the richest kings of his time, and Jerusalem was a very beautiful city. Is that the reason why our Lord wept over it? It is not. He wept over Jerusalem because the ingratitude and the obduracy of the Jewish people. By impenitence, the Jews were hastening to their own destruction. We see it in society today. Americans are not penitent for the sins which they have committed. Prophet after prophet urged the Jews to penance, and yet prophet after prophet was persecuted, was stoned, and even killed thrown from high places. The heart of the Jews was extremely hardened at the time of Christ, which is proved by their non-reaction to his miracles. Jerusalem, the fathers of the church tells us, in this particular setting, represents the unrepentant sinner, one who would not recognize God's presence, one who would not reform their lives as St. John the Baptist urged them to and our Lord urged them to. One who would give no ear to the admonitions from our Lord. To the impenitent, their end will be like that of Jerusalem. They will be destroyed. The devil will surround them and drag them to hell. It is foolishness, my dear friends, to squander the graces which God gives to us. The condemned would do penance if they could return to this earth and change their lot in life and in death, but they cannot. And so you and I must use the time of grace designed by God for us. Where we read just in the... Uh, epistle I think how God gives us all grace sufficient for the temptations that we are exposed to God will not conceal from the wicked that which serves for their salvation however but while running after the pleasures of this life they do not see the misfortunes which are pursuing them the dangers which are pursuing their souls, the traps which the devil lays for them. They are running blind. God punished Jerusalem for their blindness to his word. The Jews were repressed by the Romans. We know that at the time of our Lord. Shortly after the death of our Lord, the Jews revolted and they drove the Romans out of the city of Jerusalem. And they knew all too well Roman vengeance. And so they began to arm themselves. They made all sorts of weapons with which they may fight the Romans. Nero sent a Vespasian who captured all the small cities of Judea surrounding Jerusalem and then laid city to the, to the pearl of the Jewish nation. Jerusalem. We learn from this that there was two factions of Jews within the walls of Jerusalem at this time and they were fighting each other such that even before the Romans got there blood was flowing in the streets. Nero was murdered in 68 AD and the siege which he had established ceased for a time and the army placed Vespasian in his place. Vespasian came from Jerusalem. He was there to take the city, to punish it. But he was called to Rome to be the emperor. And so he sent Titus to capture the city at any price. And Titus would. In Easter of 70 A.D., Titus appeared at the gates of Jerusalem, 
the food supply had dwindled. Famine and pestilence soon set in the city. The leader of the revolutionary Jews in Jerusalem was John Griscala. He had confiscated all the food of the Jews. He was going to control it. The leader of the other Jews, who were not the revolutionary Jews, Simon the robber, he fought John Griscala. They sought to annihilate each other. John Griscala captured the temple and put his men in the temple. Thousands of men could fit in the temple. Simon besieged him and a bloodbath followed. Only when the Romans reappeared did the factions, the Jewish factions, stop fighting and unite against Rome. Many Jews tried to escape the city. There were perhaps two million Jews in Jerusalem at this time. Each day of those who tried to escape and those captured, 500 would be crucified each day. The Jews still would not submit. Titus found that he could not take the city by storm, and so he figured he would starve them to death. In three days, 10 miles of, of wall were built around Jerusalem. And we read this very explicitly from sacred scripture, the prophets. Thine enemy shall cast a trench about thee and compass thee around. People began searching the gutters for food. One woman was discovered having strangled her own baby cooked it and be began to eat her own child on April the, between April the 14th and July the 1st I believe in the year 70 AD 158,000 dead bodies were discovered in Jerusalem and to save the city from infection the living Jews threw over the wall 600,000 corpses All who could flee, fled. And as I mentioned before, they were captured. Most of them were captured by Titus. Titus crucified any that were fleeing who had weapons. And those who didn't have weapons, they were mercifully permitted to be slaves the rest of their lives by Titus. Some Jews thought that they could escape with their riches. They swallowed their gold. Titus was not a scrupulous man. He cut open their stomachs and took the gold from them, thus adding 2,000 more corpses the next morning as they were captured. Finally, Titus was able to enter the Fort Antonia and gain access to Jerusalem. He originally desired to leave the temple standing. It was the most magnificent temple in the world. Perhaps he wanted to leave it standing so that they could worship pagan gods. As we have seen in the Vatican, pagan gods put upon the tabernacles. But John Griscala refused to abandon the temple and so Titus had it burned to the ground. He ordered loads of salt to be brought in by camels and the grounds to be plowed and salted so that nothing again would ever grow there. Titus then killed all. It is believed that 1,100,000 were killed, 97,000 enslaved, and the rest, probably women and children more so, were dispersed throughout the Roman Empire. That is why Christ wept over Jerusalem. Not because of the destruction of buildings, but because of the destruction of so many souls who would not accept him and who would, who would be lost. Deathbed conversions are very rare. St. Augustine says, it cannot be asserted with any security that he who repents at the end has forgiveness. 
St. Jerome says scarcely one of a thousand whose life was impious or impious will truly repent of death and obtain forgiveness. St. Vincent Fair says for a man who has lived an impious life to die a good death is a greater miracle than to raise a a soul back to to life, to the raising of the dead, such as Lazarus. Repent now, my dear friends. Do not delay that interior conversion, that putting out of mortal sin. Do not delay lest we be judged like the Jerusalem of old. You can be successful in your turning towards God by frequenting the sacraments especially Holy Communion and Holy Confession. God love you and God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.